He's the only quarterback that the way he plays reminds me of Patrick. Caleb Williams has some Patrick Mahomes in him. I think he's a better prospect coming out of college than Patrick Mahomes was. The way he plays is exactly like that. He's going to go number one overall. He is going to be first overall. He should be yeah. first overall. Caleb Williams is the most impressive quarterback prospect in decades. He has been compared to the likes of Patrick Mahomes and even Aaron Rodgers while already making millions of dollars in college. He's already been dubbed the new king of college football by GQ magazine. He broke records as a freshman and sophomore in college, beat out one of the most hyped up quarterback prospects in years, and it's even been speculated that he wants to own a part of an NFL franchise upon getting drafted. But for all the record shattering moments Caleb Williams has had, there's something scouts and analysts alike haven't been saying about the phenomenal quarterback. Caleb Williams is doing something that no other quarterback has ever done before. It might be a call for concern. What is it that they're not telling us about Caleb Williams? But most importantly, will Caleb Williams live up to the hype as the greatest NFL, NFL prospect, prospect since Patrick, Patrick Mahomes? Or will he come crashing down just like USC's 2023 season? But before we get to the content, make sure you're subscribed. And now that we got all that out of the way, break! My Super Bowl picks that I made in my content with the Patrick Mahomes free square didn't hit, but the one that I posted onto my story did hit. And you guys let me know how much money you made in my DMs. And now that the NFL season's over, we're officially directing our attention to the NBA. I give away my picks for free at the Flight Mike on Instagram. And right now, when you sign up for Prize Picks, use promo code Flight Mike to get up to a $100 deposit match when you sign up on Prize Picks. Or you can just use my link in the description down below. And thank. Thank you, Prize Picks, for the sponsor. Mike, check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? Caleb Williams grew up in the nation's capital of Washington, D.C., where he fell in love with football from a very young age. The only difference from back then to now is the fact that Caleb Williams was originally a linebacker. He wasn't just any old linebacker, though. He was so good that after one game with the fifth graders, he had to be moved up to the sixth grade level because he hit kids so hard. But after playing a game with the sixth graders, the same thing happened, so he was moved up again and again until he finally finally played a full season with the 8th graders while still being in elementary school. The catalyst that forced Caleb Williams to play quarterback was watching his team lose while being on the sideline. Played on defense, so anything that the offense did was so out of his control, and this frustrated him so much that one day he and his father decided that he needed to become a quarterback in order to control how and where the football was distributed. I wanted to be able to spread the ball around to all of my wide receivers, protect them when throwing them the ball, Williams said in an interview with GQ Magazine. Magazine, I need to be in control. I need to be in charge. From then on forward, Williams would play the quarterback position, and he did it well, becoming the best quarterback prospect from the Washington, D.C. area in football history. So much so that high schools around the area were recruiting him like their livelihoods depended on it. Williams ended up attending Gonzaga College High School, where he ended up leading the school to a WCAC championship, while also being named Gatorade's D.C. Football Player of the Year in 2018. Williams finished his high school career as a junior due to his senior season being canceled because of the COVID-19 pandemic. However, he still finished with over 4,000 total yards and 30 passing touchdowns, as well as 13 rushing touchdowns. Caleb Williams was the consensus number one quarterback in the 2021 class, according to Sports Illustrated, beating out other notable names such as JJ McCarthy and Drake May. Williams would end up committing to the University of Oklahoma, where he planned on sitting behind the highly touted and hyped up Spencer Rattler before taking the reins in a season or two. However, things would not go according to plan. In fact, throw the plans out the window entirely because what would happen at Oklahoma never could have been predicted. At Oklahoma, Caleb Williams was the silhouette behind Spencer Rattler who stood in front of a red hot spotlight. Rattler was touted as one of the best quarterback prospects, not since graduating high school, since he was in middle school. Rattler even managed to throw for five touchdowns against Western Carolina to start off the 2021 season and it looked like Williams wouldn't even touch the field for a few more years. But fast forward to the Red River rivalry 
rivalry game against Texas in week six and everything came crashing down for Spencer Rattler as he struggled in the first quarter, barely completing 50% of his passes and already having one interception among many questionable passes as well. In came true freshman Caleb Williams to start the second quarter down 28 to seven and the rest, as they say, was history. Facing a three possession deficit, Caleb Williams led Oklahoma to 55 total points, including a 66 yard touchdown run of his own and a 25 point fourth quarter capped off by a 52 yard touchdown pass to knock off Texas in a come from behind victory 55 to 48. From that moment forward, Spencer Rattler never started another game for Oklahoma and it was Caleb Williams' time to shine. In his freshman season at Oklahoma, Williams put up 21 touchdown passes along with six touchdown runs, as well as nearly 2,000 yards passing and over 400 yards rushing, all in just seven starts. The season was highlighted by a dominant win over rivals Texas Tech, where Williams threw for over 400 yards and six touchdown passes, asserting himself as one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Oklahoma was set up to be Big 12 contenders for the next four years, but soon after the season ended, Oklahoma head coach Lincoln Riley left Oklahoma and signed with the University of Southern California in a deal rumored to be upwards of $100 million. The world watched with bated breath to see what Williams would do next, and what he chose to do absolutely shocked the world. Williams would follow his head coach to USC and signed an NIL deal worth over $2 million, one of the largest deal in NIL history at the time. In his 2022 USC debut season, Caleb Williams would have a clinical season, having nine games with four touchdowns and five games where he had five touchdowns. The best stretch of games by far had to be a three game stretch from week seven to nine, where Williams had a combined 15 total touchdowns and passed for over 1,100 passing yards. USC was all but a shoe in for a college football playoff spot. However, after losing to Utah in the Pac-12 championship by a score of 47 to 24, a game which saw Williams do everything in his power to win the game, throwing for three touchdowns and over 350 passing yards, USC's comeback story was over and their dream of dominating the playoff was long gone. The loss to Utah seemingly destroyed the team's will to win as they would even go on to lose to Tulane in the Cotton Bowl by a heartbreaking score of 46 to 45. Despite the disappointing end to the season, Caleb Williams still balled out, passing for over 4,500 yards and 42 touchdowns, as well as nearly 400 more yards rushing and 10 rushing touchdowns, which easily secured the sophomore signal callers as the 2022 season's Heisman Trophy winner. Going into the 2023 season, USC would get touted as one of the best teams in college football. And it wasn't uncommon to see analysts predict them as a possible national championship contender, which I know looking back sounds comical, but at the time it made a lot of sense. And during the first six games of the season, that take didn't seem that bad either, considering how USC played the part perfectly, starting off the season 6-0. Caleb Williams had an astonishing 28 total touchdowns up to that point, and was easily the Heisman Trophy favorite once again. However, after a week seven loss to Notre Dame, which saw Caleb Williams throw a career high three interceptions, it was all downhill from that point. After starting off the season 6-0, the USC Trojans would win just one of their last six games. And just two games before the end of the season, defensive coordinator Alex Grinch was fired after surrendering over a hundred combined points against California and Washington. Despite the fact that USC finished seven and five, Caleb Williams still showcased his generational talent, putting up over 3,600 passing yards, 30 touchdowns to just five interceptions, as well as an additional 11 rushing touchdowns. The junior quarterback might not have repeated as the Heisman Trophy winner, but he is doing something that no other quarterback in football history has ever done, and it's making scouts across the NFL scratch their head in confusion. You see, every football player, no matter what age, wants to play in the NFL. And Caleb Williams is no different, as he's made it clear he intends to declare for the NFL draft, but he sure did take his time in doing so. The deadline for declaring for the NFL draft was January 15th, and despite the fact that USC season was done over a month before the deadline, Williams took up until the deadline to declare because he wanted to see which NFL team would end up with the first overall pick. The Chicago Bears hold the first overall pick due to the fact that they acquired the Panthers first round pick one year ago in the trade that landed Carolina Bryce Young. And in the case you're wondering if the Bears qualify as a franchise that Caleb Williams would like to play for, the answer is hard to say. In the past, Caleb Williams has liked a tweet saying that the Chicago Bears should not draft him in the upcoming NFL draft. However, recently he's also liked tweets of him in a Bears uniform. However, if you just go based off of the first liked tweet, this has to be the first time a player has openly liked a tweet saying that a franchise should not draft them. The last time something even remotely close to this has happened has to be when Eli Manning told the Chargers not to draft him. And after they drafted him, he forced a trade to the New York Giants. We see a 2.0 version of this
this situation once again? Probably not, as if the Bears draft Williams, he'll probably just sign the rookie contract and play for them. And plus, Justin Fields recently unfollowed the Bears on Instagram, meaning he probably knows this is his final year on the team. But at the same time, Justin Fields also said this when he was asked why he did it. Why do people take social media so serious? Like, <laughs> but like why, why are you not following follow, the Bears? They still mess with the Bears. It's not, I'm just trying to take a little break. I unfollow the Bears and the NFL, bro. Another first for Caleb Williams is also the fact that it is rumored that whatever team drafts him, he would like an ownership in the team. Now, this is just a rumor, and like all rumors should be taken with a grain of salt. Plus, it wouldn't even be allowed to happen as Tom Brady wasn't even allowed to have ownership in an NFL team while playing and had to wait until after he retired to buy a portion of the Las Vegas Raiders. All in all, that rumor doesn't seem credible. And as for trying to get the Chicago Bears to avoid drafting him, this doesn't seem credible either, seeing as the only shred of evidence we have is Caleb Williams liking one tweet, then promptly pushing back by liking other tweets. But if Caleb Williams is going to go to another team, it would probably be the Washington Commanders, as they recently hired Cliff Kingsbury as their offensive coordinator, and Kingsbury's latest job in football was being a part of the USC offensive staff working directly with Williams. For this to happen, Chicago would need to decide that Justin Fields is their franchise quarterback and either trade the number one overall pick to the Commanders or draft Marvin Harrison Jr. and let the Commanders draft Caleb Williams second overall in the draft. Now, this is all pure speculation since it's incredibly hard to tell what's going to happen to Caleb Williams, and that's mainly because he has no agent. That's, that's right, Caleb, Caleb Williams, the greatest NFL prospect since Patrick Mahomes, has no agent. This might seem like an issue, but when you remember that Lamar Jackson, the reigning defending league MVP, also had no agent and managed to ink a huge contract with the Ravens last offseason, it doesn't seem like that big of a deal. As for whether or not Caleb Williams is a legitimate talent, well, all signs are pointing to yes. Williams displays elite mechanics that some NFL quarterbacks can't even do, such as throwing at unique angles, his ability to throw off platform, the ability to make plays on his own, and the oh-so-coveted ability to scramble and pick up yards with his legs. All of these characteristics are why analysts are calling him the next coming, coming of Patrick, Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes. I know, I'm just as annoyed as you are. The title of the video is supposed to be ironic, by the way. Williams displays solid mechanics for a quarterback playing in college. And seeing as the kid has a 3.3 GPA at USC, it's not like he's lacking mentally either. I mean, it is USC, it's not UCLA. If it was UCLA, I'd say that's much better achievement. Now, it might take him some time to learn how to read and diagnose an NFL defense, but it's doubtful that will take much time for him. Caleb Williams has been the best quarterback everywhere he went, from high school to Oklahoma to now USC. There hasn't been much adversity he has had to go through on the field, and that is where the one glaring flaw lies. You could argue the adversity at USC would be generationally bad defense, and while that is certainly true, the adversity I'm specifically talking about is the quarterback position. Sure, Williams had to overcome his terrible defense defenses at USC, but he hasn't had to overcome not having good receivers. He hasn't had to overcome a spotty offensive line or a god-awful running back. These are things he will have to overcome in the NFL. Take Bryce Young, for instance. Last year, he could do no wrong at Alabama, but now with the Carolina Panthers, a team with no true number one wide receiver, a team with one of the worst offensive lines in football, a team that traded away their best player in Christian McCaffrey, he's struggling like nobody could have predicted. Now, I'm not saying Bryce Young will be a bust or that Caleb Williams will be a bust either, just that quarterbacks have played a program stacked with offensive talent aren't used to carrying poor offenses. And you shouldn't expect Caleb Williams to take over the NFL his rookie year like he did in college. To get away from being negative, don't be worried about Caleb Williams overall as a prospect because he has displayed an unrelenting desire to be the best quarterback of all time. And although it is unlikely he will ever reach those heights, he still has a better chance of doing so than most quarterbacks. Caleb Williams will be successful at the next level. There's no doubt about that. But the real question is, can he do it at the same level he did in college. All historical arrows point to no, but if anyone can defy those odds, it's the man who is redefining what it means to be the best quarterback in the country. Do you think Caleb Williams is a generational talent or a generational bust? Is he the next coming of Patrick Mahomes or the next coming of Jamarcus Russell? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.